that it you are really aware of conducted. the data you are aware that it happened but you were not personally there yes yes you did not participate yes ma'am how about this 22 that you mentioned in your certification ito ba na attendan mo lahat no ma'am honestly ma'am ito ang istorya pinas Ginisa sa Quad Committee hearing ang mga sundalo na nasa likod yung ano ni Vice President Sara Duterte. Oh my God, grabe to. General Nolasco Pimpin na retired ang Purse of the Philippines ng Dabaw at Commander ng 10th Infantry Aguila ay inappoint di umano ni BP Sara Duterte bilang Undersecretary ng DepEd at nung nasa posisyon pa itong si Nolasco Pimpin sa DepEd ay mayroong di kaayayang nangyayari patungkol sa confidential pan ng Department of Education pero nang tanongin ni Congresswoman Jinky Luistro patungkol dito ay wala di umano itong alam dagdag pa dito ay nanghingi na eksplenasyon ng COA tungkol sa 15 million para sa payment to reward informers at meron di umano itong response na apat na certificates ng Youth Leadership Summit iniisa-isa naman ni Congresswoman Jinky Luistro ang apat na kernel ng kasundaluhan dahil napakaraming Youth Leadership Summit activities ang nakasaad sa certificate ngunit isa o wala naman itong mga kernel nang ginanap ang mga aktibidad na ito totoo ba na mayroong naging kickback na nangyari para sa 125 million confidential fund bakit hindi pa rin nahatulan ang lahat ng nasangkot sa isyong ito kaya sabi pa ng ibang madlang netizen ang ganda magimbestiga sa Quadcom kaysa Senado lahat sila sa Congress ang tatalino ganda panoorin may pangil bawat tanong Congrats sa Quadcom. Saludo kaming lahat ng mamayan. Ayan ang mga sinungaling na mga pulis. Nagkandara pa na sa pagsagot. Di kayo makalusot ni Atty. Luis Tro. Why the military allows their forces to be used by the DepEd just to justify the CEF of the department? This is not good. Hay nakakahiya talaga yung mga nagdaang admin. Ang dami nilang ginawang pagkakitaan. Kawawa ang bayan sa mga ganitong tao. Dapat ikulong panagutin sa mga ginawa nila itong mga miyembro ng kasundaluhang ito nakakamangha ang mga nakamit na ranggo pero sa hearing na ito parang mga grade 1 pupils sa kabilang last section na sumagot sa surprise discussion grabe talaga to si Inday walang konsensyang gumastos ng pera dahil alam niyang may pagkukunan siya na walang kahirap-hirap kaya malaya siyang kahit saan Our gastuhin ng pera Our Undersecretary for Administration of the Department of Education that was during the stint of Former Secretary, Vice President Sara Duterte, do you confirm? Major General... Uh, Major General... Uh, former Major General uh, Nolasco... Nolasco, you're recognized by the Chair. You're, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. You're, Chair? Please answer the question of Congresswoman Luis Tere. Yes, Your Honor. So you confirm having been appointed as Undersecretary for Administration of DepEd. That was during the time of former Secretary Vice President Sara Duterte. Let us go back to your career in the AFP, General Mempin. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Back in 2017, nasan po ba kayo, General Mempin? Uh, in 2017, ma'am, initially I was assigned in uh, 10th Infantry Division as uh, the Chief of the Governance and Strategy Man Management Office, uh, effective January 2017. Then by August of the uh, same year, I was uh, designated as the Commander of uh, Task Force Dabao in Dabao City, uh, Mr. Chair. So the first appointment in 2017 was at the 10th Infantry Division. Correct, uh, Your Honor. Pag sinabi po ba natin, General Mempin, 10th Infantry Division, what areas are covered? The 10th Infantry uh, Aguila Division covers the uh, whole of uh, Region 11 and part of uh, Region 12, part of uh, Region 10, and uh, part of uh, Region 13, Caraga, uh, Your Honor. And can you please cite some of the big provinces which are under these regions, General Mempin? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honor, 
uh, for Region 11, it covers uh, Davao City, uh, Davao uh, del Norte, Davao del Sur, Davao Occidental, uh, and uh, Davao Oriental. It also includes uh, parts of uh, Bukidnon, but the uh, greater part of Bukidnon is under uh, Port Infantry Division and part of uh, uh, North Cotabato, ma'am. And for Region 12, General Mempin? Region 12 is a uh, part of uh, Cotabato, ma'am. And Region 13? Region 13 is part of uh, Agusan uh, Sur and a part of uh, Surigao del Sur, ma'am. Can you please be specific about the inclusive period when you were the commander of the 10th Infantry Division, which covers regions 11, 12, and 13? I was uh, designated as uh, commander of the uh, 10th Infantry Division in uh, February of uh, 2022 until uh, my retirement in uh, January 28, uh, 2023, ma'am, uh, Your Honor. And Earlier, you mentioned about 2017, and you were likewise at the 10th Infantry Division. What specific assignment do you have during that time? Uh, from 2017, ma'am, uh, uh, I was assigned as the commander of Task Force uh, Dabao uh, in charge of uh, covering, uh, actually it only covers uh, the downtown Dabao, uh, in charge of uh, the anti-terrorism uh, unit of the armed forces because of the uh, series of bombing, because uh, Task Force Dabao was established in 2003. Then uh, after that, in 2019, I was, uh, after my stint at, at the Task Force Dabao, I was designated as the commander of the uh, uh, 10-03rd Infantry Brigade, covering uh, uh, parts of uh, Dabao region, Dabao del no specifically Dabao del Norte, uh, parts of uh, Dabao Oriental, parts of ba the northern or the mountainous area of Dabo City, and then uh, some parts of uh, Pukidnon and some parts of uh, North Cotabato, ma'am. So would it be correct to say 2017, General Mempin, you were heading the task force Davao, primarily in charge with Davao City and the major parts of the Davao region. Do you confirm that? Uh, Ma'am, for clarification, uh, Mr. Chair, during my stint as Task Force Dabao, it only covers uh, the downtown because uh, Dabao City is divided into three areas. The, uh, it has uh, the downtown, midtown, and the uptown. The midtown is the, the downtown is the uh, central district. Then uh, midtown and uh, up, uh, uptown are those areas. Uh, so which part are you in charge with? For uh, 2017, ma'am, uh, 2017 until uh, 2019 in... Uh, uptown or downtown? downtown? Downtown, during task You are in charge of downtown in 2017 until as the head of task, task force, force Davao. Correct, ma'am. Yeah, and then sometime know. in 2019... You became in charge of the 10th Infantry Brigade covering most parts of the Davao region. Na chat, ma'am. Uh, uh, 2019, I was designated as the Brigade Commander. Uh, brigade Commander is under the 10th Infantry Division still, uh, covering uh, Dabao, some parts of Davao region, specifically Davao del Norte, Dabao Oriental and uh, uh, not Dabao Oriental, Dabao Del Norte. Yes, General, you have City. stated that yes, already. And then for 2022, this is the time that you were in charge of the 10th Infantry Division covering the regions 11, 12, and 13. That's correct, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. And of course, I just wish to manifest that during this time, 2017 to 2022, the president was former President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Uh, yes, that's correct, uh, 
Your Honor, Mr. Chen. And for the Vow City, the mayor during that time was our Vice President, Sara Duterte. That's correct, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. And considering that you are taking care of the regions, the provinces, and the city, which are considered the hometown of the president, may I know, was there any marching order coming from the president, having assigned to those places? None, actually, because uh, as member of the armed forces, our main objective is to ensure, uh, to protect the people and uh, secure the uh, uh, territory for, uh, for our sovereignty. So uh, basically for the army or the 10th Infantry Agra Division, our uh, focus is on uh, insurgency uh, problem. While in the Bau City, during my stint as task force the Bau commander is for the extreme uh, terrorism like bombing of the uh, extreme with all due uh, respect uh general mempian i hope you will be responsive to the question because the vow of course is the place of the former president so this representation is interested whether in your assignment in 2017 2019 and 2022, all pertaining to the Vow region. Mayroon po bang specific na marching order ang presidente, considering that these places are his home places? Uh, I have not uh, received any specific instructions, but uh, as, thank you, General uh, Mempin. I think you have answered the question already. Thank, thank you. Your How Mr. about Chair. any marching order from the Vice President during your stint as Task Force Davao Head? Uh, the only instruction that I received during our uh, assumption or during my assumption as uh, Task Force Davao Commander is to have zero bombing incident because he said if there's a bombing incident in the Bau City, then you failed your uh, mission as uh, commander of Task Force Davao. So zero bombing, that's the specific instructions of former uh, Mayor uh, Sara Duterte. I know. wish to remind you of the article which was published in Sun Star. Ang sabi po ng ating Vice Presidente noon ay City Mayor Kayo po ang head ng Task Force Dabao. Don't sleep. Don't breathe. Don't embarrass me. Do you confirm that? Uh, that's correct. I still have the newspaper on that, ma'am. Now, please enlighten us. Walk us through. During the time that you were assigned in Davao City and the rest of the other areas of the Davao region, how will you describe the peace and order situation in Davao? In uh, Dabo City, ma'am, actually, when my when I first arrived, because I was uh, also assigned in uh, Dabo region for a short stint in 2008, uh, the first thing that I noticed in uh, Dabo. With all due respect, Mr. Chair, let us remind our resource speaker to be responsive to the question. We are asking General Mempin about the status of the Bao with respect to the peace and order situation during your time as the head of Task Force Davao, I think that is 2017 until 2019. Uh, for uh, the Davao, downtown Davao, ma'am, oh, it is uh, very peaceful, but uh, still the threat of uh, terrorism is there, so the existence of Task Force Davao is still... In the scale needed. of 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest and 10 being the highest, how peaceful is Davao? Uh, Ten, ma'am, because up to now, no Ten. incident of terrorism. So that confirms the description of Colonel Garma in one of our hearings that the vow is one of the most livable city in the Philippines. You agree with that? Uh, yes, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. And of course, you're one of the reasons why you are able to maintain or you were able to maintain such level of peace and order in the Vow City because you were the one in charge, the partner of the LGU. May we ask General Mempin, ano po ba ang mga programang 
ginawa ninyo sa Davao City to be able to achieve the level 10, the highest score in terms of peace and order that you just gave to Davao City? To be candid about it, ma'am, actually, we, I just uh, continue uh, what my uh, predecessors have done because when I assume in 2017... General Mempin, kindly focus on the programs. Ano po yung programs na inyong in-implement? Uh, number one, ma'am, is uh, continued uh, collaboration with uh, various stakeholders, particularly with the uh, Muslim uh, communities in the Bau City to ensure that there will no slippage of uh, probable or would be uh, bombing incident in Davao City, ma'am. Any other programs, General Mempin? Of course, uh, continue uh, information uh, awareness to all the uh, residents or not only residents but uh, people visiting Davao because right now, we, we the term right now is culture of security where uh, security is everybody's concern and not only of the uh, security units like the AAP and the uh, Philippine National Police, ma'am. I assume, General Mempin, that you were able to implement a lot of programs for you to be able to achieve that level 10 peace and order situation. So aside from the collaboration with Muslim communities and the information awareness dissemination, can you please cite more programs which you recall were very significant in your achievement of the level 10 peace and order in the Vow City? Uh, yes, ma'am. Number one is uh, uh, collaboration, information awareness, then uh, continued uh, uh, meetings with uh, or uh, exchange of uh, information with uh, intelligence uh, uh, units or uh, security units in the bow. Uh, continued uh, collaboration with the business business sector because uh, they are uh, the one uh, who needs to be convinced that the bow is safe for the investment to stay in the bow or in increase uh, of it. Then, uh, of course, uh, you continued uh, presence because uh, actually the word uh, do not sleep, we continue patrols in the Bau City, mobile, fixed checkpoint in the Bau Airport, and even uh, business establishment uh, when there are major uh, engagement, task force the Bau is uh, always present. And of course, uh, uh, we continue to uh, uh, make our personnel uh, professional because uh, what whatever programs uh, you have, if the people, uh, if, meaning our soldiers, is not uh, uh, professional in handling, like for example, we always conduct uh, checkpoint operations and uh, we always ask uh, uh, indulgence of the uh, inconvenience that we have uh, cost to the uh, uh, passenger and into the drivers entering uh, Dabao City. So that's all uh, part of our uh, programs to ensure that uh, everybody is uh, cooperating to ensure that no bombing incident will occur in Dabao City. I wish to make a recap of what you said, General Mempin. You mentioned collaboration with Muslim communities information, awareness, and dissemination to all residents, meetings with other intelligence units, collaboration with business and other sectors, presence of patrols, and presence with all other professionals to make sure that no bombing incident will happen in the Vow City. You confirm that? That's correct, uh, Your Honor. And these are the reasons why you were able to achieve the level 10 the highest score for the peace and order situation in the Vow City. You confirm? Uh, yes, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. And I must say, Mr. Chair, General Mempin, na ito rin ang dahilan why I wish to conclude pinagtiwalaan ka ng noon ay City Mayor and now our Vice President, Sara Duterte. Yes, uh, Your Honor. Level 10 score is something that I am sure 
you will be able to gain the trust and confidence of whoever is the local chief executive of the area to which you are assigned. You agree with me? Yes, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Let's Chair. move forward, General Mempin. Kailan po kayo nag-retire sa I, AFP? I retired last uh, January 28, 2023, Your January Honor. January 28, 2023. And I understand you entered the Department of Education during the time of VP Sara Duterte. You confirm that? That's correct, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Can you please enlighten us? Ano pong appointment ang nabigay sa inyo during your time in DepEd? Uh, first, ma'am, I was uh, uh, appointed as uh, or recruited as uh, consultant of uh, Department of Education from April. Can you please expound? Consultant on what matter? Uh, I was a uh, uh, highly techni technical consultant uh, because I came from the armed forces and uh, uh, our uh, former secretary and uh, vice president uh, consider me as an asset in uh, uh, collaboration or engaging the uh, security sector. And you believe, General Mempin, that it was your career in the AFP, which was considered by then Secretary of DepEd, why you were hired as the highly technical consultant. That's correct, uh, Your Honor. If Mr. you can Chair. still recall, General Mempin, ano po ba ang trabaho ng isang highly technical consultant as you were made to understand during your, that stint in the Department of Education? Uh, when you uh, become a highly consultant, meaning the uh, unit or the agency could not have it on its own uh, personnel. That's why they could uh, uh, engage or hire the services of a uh, consultant, ma'am. For the information of the Filipino people, General Mempin, please allow me to share the functions which were under your position as highly technical consultant. One, provide high-level policy advice on topics agenda that are confidential in nature. Two, provide guidance, technical oversight, and expert advice to DepEd in the development of various programs in all levels of governance on safety and security. Three, engage and collaborate with other departments and security-related services. Four, submit monthly status to OSEC. And five, perform other duties related thereto. Would you agree with me, General Memphin, that as highly technical consultant, your mandate is to make sure that the need to promote and ensure safety and security is well addressed. That's uh, correct, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. You confirm that? Yes. And having confirmed that, tama po bang isipin, you are the one in charge also of the confidential funds of the Department of Education? Uh, that's not uh, correct, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Then, General Memphin, if you are not the one in charge of this confidential fund, then who is or who was? I was not uh, aware of because uh, I only more on, because after uh, April, May, uh, when uh, USEC for administration is open, uh, I was uh, again asked if uh, I could, but uh, I'm not part of the utilization or how the confidential part. But you is, agree uh, with me, General Memphin, lahat ng trabaho na ibinigay sa inyo, hindi nyo ito kayang isagawa without the necessary funding. And the funding that is allowed for these purposes is, of course, the confidential fund. Do you agree with me? Uh, that's correct, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, but uh, I have not uh, received any instructions and also uh, 
funds for that matter on uh, in the performance or in the uh, accomplishment of uh, task given or mandate to me as the uh, consultant. Uh, your in other owner. words, General Memphine, while your job description as highly technical consultant pertains to safety and security, you have no access to confidential fund and you did not give any instruction from the head of the agency. That is your statement. Do you confirm that? Uh, yes, uh, Your Honor. I am, I am not uh, part of uh, Thank the you. utilization. Let us move confidence. forward, General Memphine. Kanina may na-mention po kayo. After some time, you were appointed as the USEC for administration. Did you apply for this position? Uh, no, ma'am. I was uh, recruited by the former secretary and vice president. Balikan ko po yung highly technical consultant. Of course, you express your desire because a notice of award was given to you to be the highly technical consultant. Aside from you, General Memphin, meron pa po bang iba na nag-express ng desire to be engaged as the highly technical consultant? Uh, I'm not uh, particularly aware of uh, other consultant that express their willingness, but uh, I do believe there are uh, other uh, consultant that uh, the Office of the Secretary has uh, tapped. I understand. How about with respect to your appointment as USEC for administration? You said you were chosen. You confirmed that? Uh, I was uh, recruited, yes, ma'am. You were recruited. Who recruited you to become the Undersecretary for Administration? The former Secretary and Vice President, uh, Sarah, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. And would you know why? Bakit ikaw ang napusuan na bigyan at pagkalooban nitong pagiging Undersecretary for Administration ng Department of Education? As to the uh, reason, the actual reason behind it, I was not aware, but uh, I can surmise the trust and confidence that uh, she has on me. That uh, is maybe correct. The, the reason, ma'am. The trust and confidence that you were able to establish as head of Task Force Davao in 2017 and being the the one in charge of the 10th Infantry Division in Regions 11, 12, and 13 were very significant, not only in your engagement as highly technical consultant, but in your appointment as well as Undersecretary for Administration of DepEd. We agree on that, General Memvin. Yes, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. As a matter of fact, to illustrate how the former secretary trusted you, may I ask, are you aware of Department Order Number 78, General Mempin? Yes, ma'am. What is Department Order Number 78? It's about uh, the uh, procurement, ma'am. With all due respect, dito po sa Department Number 78, ibinibigay po ang mandato na pamunuan ang Department Computerization Program hmm? sa Program Director. You confirm this? Yes, I stand corrected, ma'am. So about In other uh, words, since 2010, General Memphin, ang, com ang Department Computerization Program ay pinamumunuan ng Program Director. Ito po ang nakasaad sa Department Order Number 78. But because the former secretary trusted you so much on this position of being the Undersecretary for Administration, the DepEd issued DO Number 16, Series of 2023. Would you like to enlighten us kung ano po itong DO 16, Series of 2023? Actually, it's the revision of uh, the Department of Order, order uh, 78, ma'am, Series 2010. Uh, it's uh, actually revising uh, the compositions of uh, the those for the procurement. To be specific, of General Memphis, with all due respect, 
ano ho ang pinaka-significant na naging pagbabago in terms of the DepEd computerization program from DO78 to DO16? It's not only the uh, director who decides for the uh, computer, uh, procurement of uh, department computerization program. For the information of the committee, General Memphin, it is clear that from DO number 16, the management of the department's computerization program was transferred from the program director to the undersecretary for administration, and that is you. General Memphin. That is how the former secretary trusted you. A policy which has long been existing for 13 long years, 2010, was suddenly changed, transferring the management of DepEd computerization program from the program director to the office of the undersecretary for administration. Do you agree with me? Uh, pa yes, ma'am. Ma can I uh, elaborate, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Uh, please continue. Actually, b b before uh, the computerization program is, uh, because actually we notice uh, uh, some issues in the DCP, pro DCP procurement, particularly in terms of uh, the members. So, because the uh, there's a huge amount of money involved in the DepEd computerization program. So it was agreed through the executive uh, uh, committee uh, as a collegial body to elevate the authority of uh, deciding the DepEd computerization program from program director to... Uh, but uh, basically, the program director is uh, actively involved in the... Uh, I making. understand, General Mempi. Now let us go to the DepEd computerization program. Per fiscal year 2023, mayroon po kayong report. Ang sabi nyo, the delay and underperformance in procuring the ICT packages for 2023 were mainly due to the reconfiguration of the original specification and modifications of the package contents. You agree with this? Uh, yes. yes. Uh, because this is in your report. But I wish to ask General Mempin, how come in your physical target versus accomplishment, kindly show on the screen, ito pong fiscal year 2023, this is your time as the one heading the DepEd computerization program simultaneous with you being the undersecretary for administration. Zero percent po ang accomplishment ng DepEd computerization program. Can you please enlighten us on this? Act <clears throat> Uh, actually, ma'am, uh, nandito po yung uh, director ng uh, ICTS, but uh, to, to give you insight on uh, the performance, because ma'am, uh, when we arrived in DepEd 2023, actually, it's still the 2022 uh, DCP programs uh, being processed because of the delay during the 2022 because of the change of uh, the uh, administration. So actually, ma'am, uh, late uh, uh, 2023 na po na process completely yung... May we uh, know why, DCP. General Memphin? Of course, we understand from the records na yung 2023 budget, hindi nyo po na utilize and that is the reason kung bakit naka 0% ang accomplishment rate. May we know the reason why? Uh, because of uh, the partly of uh, the procurement process because uh, it has to go to the uh, bids and awards committee and uh, the members of the bids and awards committee is uh, still uh, pull uh, hands in pull in terms of the uh, DCP But of course 2020. you realize General Memphin the value of this DepEd computerization program with respect to the learning of the students who 
are supposedly relying on this. Tama po ba? That's uh, correct, Your Honor, Mr. And Chair. to complete the picture, General Memphine, I wish to share to the committee, mayroon po kayong na-procure 44,638 ICT packages and DepEd packages sa taong 2022 and 2023. Ngunit ayon sa annual audit report ng COA, ang na-deliver nyo lang is 16,500 80. This is not even one half of what is supposed to be delivered. So to make it clear, General Memphin, na kapag procure po kayo ng 44,638 ICT packages, but per report of COA, ang delivered palang is 16,580, equivalent to. 37% of the supposed accomplishment. Can you please explain this? Uh, Ma'am, uh, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, if I uh, may uh, request the uh, uh, director of uh, ICTS because uh, uh, I, I was not already out of uh, uh, DepEd since uh, July, so I'm not aware of the updates in terms of uh, deliveries with regards so that uh, maybe General Memphis, we could have with a all good due respect, picture. the procurement happened in 2023. Yes, Ibig sabihin na bili na po ito. 44,638 ICT packages. You were still with DepEd. Yes, ma'am. You signed but, uh, only last July 2024. Tama yes, po ba? From your perspective as... Undersecretary for Administration and the one heading the DepEd Computerization Program. Ano po ba naging appreciation nyo dito? Anong naging dahilan? Why you were way below the supposed accomplishment when in fact, ang dami nyo naman palang nabili. Or, if I may rephrase the question, nasan po yung nawawalang ICT packages? Ah... Your Honor, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, po, during the 2023, uh, only the DCP 2022, DCP 2022 was processed, uh, procured, and only started uh, uh, delivering in late uh, 2023. And uh, actually, only in, the first in three... In both dates that you mentioned, General Memphin, you're very much connected still with the Department of Education. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, so I'm explaining that uh, during the 2023, ma'am, the DCP 2022 is uh, uh, prioritized, so it's only being uh, deliberated or processed in the procurement. And late of uh, October, that's only... There are only, or there were only three lots of DCP which were uh, successfully bidded out, and uh, 13 Mephine, was processed in 20. If I may interrupt, let's simplify the question. The 44,638 ICT packages were procured during that time. Only 16,000 were delivered. Nasan po yung iba? Mama. Because you, the 13, the three lots supposedly delivered during December and early January of uh, 2024 uh, were uh, subject to uh, request for extension of some of the supplier, which we were not uh, Mr. Chair, convinced. I lament that General Mempin cannot, could not give a clear and complete account of this 44,638. And I still have a lot of questions to raise. So may I just uh, request General Mempin to please submit a written accounting of this 44,638 ICT packages with respect to their current whereabouts. Simply lang po ang question, General Mempin. Nasaan yung 44,000 minus 16,000 na ICT packages? Moving forward, Mr. Chair.